where learning never stops. Yes, good afternoon students. Good afternoon sa mga nanonood sa ating synchronous class today. Good afternoon din sa mga kasamahan ko sa science department, lalo na sa grade 9. So, hello um, sa unang nag-comment ng good afternoon sa atin. So, hi to Ma'am Sally. Hi din kay Nicole, Sophia, Ryan, Amerson, and sa estudyante ni Ma'am Annabel, Christelle. Good afternoon. Dan Arvin, Jam. Then sa estudyante ni Ma'am Lovely, si Charlie. So, good afternoon sa inyong lahat at also kay Gazir. So, kumusta kayo? Tayo ay nasa bagong topic natin, bagong topic for this week. So, we will be dealing with energy from volcanoes, but still part pa rin ng module 1. Now, so before we proceed with our discussion, um, how are you feeling today, our dear students? So, kindly comment the emoticon of your choice. Are you feeling excited, feeling loved, feeling happy, feeling sleepy, or feeling accomplished? Kasi natapos nyo na ang tasks ng week 1 and week 2. Pwede nyo rin i-comment ang name ng inyong science teacher, no? Para mabanggit ko rin. So, Gazil and Arvin are feeling accomplished. The same with Crystal. Uy, very good si Crystal, ha? With Jiro. So, good afternoon, Juliana. Sino ba ang teacher ni Ju Juliana? So, the same with uh, Amerson is feeling love and accomplished. So, Muriel and Ryan are also feeling accomplished. So, very good sila, no? Ang gagaling ng mga students namin. Okay? So, for today's uh, lesson, um, balikan natin yung portion ng video lesson natin last week. So, let's watch this uh, clip as part of the vid uh, video lesson that we discussed last week. Despite the risks of an eruption, people still choose to live in volcanic areas. Volcanoes can provide people with many benefits just like the following. Volcanic rock and ash provide fertile land which results in a higher crop yield for farmers. Volcanic deposits are also used as a building material. Volcanoes produce spectacular scenery that increases tourism in the place. Okay. So, natatandaan nyo ba tong portion ng discussion natin last week, ng video lesson natin? So, sa palagay nyo, tungkol saan ba itong um, uh, mga examples na binanggit sa video lesson na ito? So, anyway, si Juliana daw ay estudyante ni Ma'am Lovely. Okay? So, she's feeling loved today. Okay, so palagay nyo, ano ba ang ipina, uh, itinuturo sa atin itong mga examples na nabanggit sa video lesson natin last week? In relation to volcanoes. Yes, yeah, so Emerson said that these are uh, this talks about advantages and disadvantages of volcanoes. But to be specific, these examples here are the advantages of living near volcanoes. So, these are the pos uh, positive effects of volcanoes. Okay, now, aside from these um, advantages, um, of course, meron pang isang um, magandang dulot sa atin ang mga volcanoes. At yan yung pag-aaralan natin for this week. So, our um, most essential learning competency for this week is that you should be able to illustrate how energy from volcanoes may be tapped for human use. So, sa palagay nyo, ano kayang energy ang magagamit natin kaling sa mga vulkan? So, to understand uh, this um, competency more, let's watch this video. Since our country is a home to more than a hundred volcanoes, energy has been tapped from them. Eh ano nga bang energy ang nakukuha mula sa mga bulkan? Paano nagagamit ang energy na ito upang makalikha ng kuryente? O makinig mabuti upang malaman nyo ang sagot. Dito lang sa Science Matters where learning never stops.
from space, the Earth's surface is seen as a peaceful groupings of land and water. But inside the Earth, it is turbulent and hot. Below the Earth's crust lie layers of molten rock called magma. And at the Earth's core, temperatures can be as hot as 5,000 degrees Celsius. Paano nga ba nagagamit ang natural heat na ito upang makalikha ng kuryente? Geothermal energy is defined as heat from within the Earth that can be used for heating and generating electricity. The prefix geo means Earth and the word thermal means heat. So, geothermal literally means Earth's heat. Ibig sabihin, ang geothermal energy ay isang uri ng energy na galing sa init na nakatago at nabubuo sa ilalim ng lupa. There are extreme amounts of heat found at the core of the Earth. In fact, this intense heat is enough to melt rocks resulting in magma. Magma that reaches the Earth's surface through cracks in the Earth's crust is known as lava. However, magma does not always come to the surface of the Earth. If it stays trapped within the layers of the Earth, it can heat underground water. It can form natural pools of heated water known as hot springs or gushing jets of hot water and steam that burst up from the Earth's surface known as heat. If the heated water within the Earth does not reach the Earth's surface, it remains as underground concentrations of hot water and steam, known as geothermal reservoir. By tapping into geothermal reservoir, we can efficiently heat our homes and businesses and even generate electricity. But how is geothermal energy generated? One way to generate geothermal energy is through geothermal power plants. Geothermal power plants are facilities that convert the Earth's natural heat into electricity. Paano nakapag-generate ng electricity ang isang geothermal power plant? Excited na ba kayong malaman? The following are steps to generate electricity in a geothermal power plant. Wells are drilled 2 to 3 kilometers deep into the earth to pump steam or hot water to the surface. When the water reaches the surface, the drop in pressure causes the water to turn into steam. The steam spins a turbine, which is connected to a generator that produces electricity. Cooling tower cools the steam, which it condenses back to water. The cold water is pumped back into the earth to begin the process again. Sa madaling sabi, ang init na nagmumula sa loob ng earth ang siyang ginagamit ng mga geothermal power plants upang makalikha ng kuryente. Alam niyo ba that the Philippines is one of the world's top producers of geothermal power as it is located along the ring of fire zone of Pacific Volcanoes. 
In fact, noong 2019, ang ating bansa ay rank 3 in the world in terms of geothermal energy production. And as of June 2020, ang Pilipinas ay may 7 geothermal fields which supply about 12% of the nation's energy with a long-term plan to early double capacity by 2040. The following are the seven geothermal power plants that are used to generate electricity in the country. The geothermal field of Tiwi is located at Mount Malinao in the province of Albay. In 1982, Tiwi became the world's first water-dominated system to produce more than 160 megawatts. Mindanao Geothermal Production Field also known as the Mount Apo Geothermal Power Plant, is located in Barangay Ilomavis, Kidapawan City, North Cotabato, near foot of Mount Apo with a power output of 106 megawatts. Currently of kind of Mindanao grid to supply electricity to Kidapawan and Davao region. Mount Makiling Banahaw, also known as Makban Geothermal Power Complex, is located on the border between Laguna and Batangas provinces. It is the fourth biggest geothermal power facility in the world with an output capacity of 458 megawatts. Tongonan Geothermal Power Plant is situated in Kananga, Leyte. The power plant generates and supplies electricity in Leyte and also exports power to Cebu through the Leyte Cebu Interconnection Project. Northern Negros Geothermal Power Plant is located at Bago City, Northern Negros. This infrastructure has a design capacity of 49.37 megawatts. Palinpinon Geothermal Power Plant is located at Valencia, Negros Oriental. Bacon Manito also known as Bachman Geothermal Power Plant, is located at the Pokdol Volcanic Range, Bacon, Sorsogon. Ngayon, alam nyo na kung paano nagagamit ang init na galing sa ilalim ng lupa upang makalikha ng kuryente. I hope you learned something new today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe our channel, Dasma North Science, so you won't miss any video lesson. I am Ma'am Janice Reyes, your grade 9 science teacher, only here at Science Matters, where learning never stops. Science Matters, where learning never stops. Okay, so di ba? Ang dali lang ng lesson natin for this week, ano? So, you just have to um, describe what a geothermal energy is. And of course, uh, natutunan nyo dun, nyo dun sa video natin, nalaman nyo dun sa video natin na may mga geothermal power plants pala dito sa Pilipinas at ginagamit na rin no, dito sa ating bansa. So, as a quick summary, uh, summary of the lesson, so remember, that geothermal energy is just defined as heat from within the earth. And in order uh, for human to harness this energy, this geothermal energy, uh, we use it by uh, through the uh, through geothermal power plants. So nag-build ng mga geothermal power plants dun sa mga lugar na may mga active volcanoes. And of course, these facilities convert our uh, the Earth's natural heat in order to produce electricity. So again, what are the ways on how we can um, convert this heat into electricity? So number one, wells are drilled. So two, pump steam or to produce hot water to the surface. Then once this is already in the surface, the, the pressure drops, then causing it causing the water to turn into steam. So pag steam na yan, then it will um, spin a turbine. 
So the turbine is connected to a generator, then that generator will produce electricity. So example of this, so kung titingnan nyo dito sa animation, ito ay sample na coal power plant. So ang nagpapagana naman sa, ang nagpapaikot ng kanyang turbine ay coal. So sa isang geothermal power plant, ang nagpapaikot ng kanyang turbine, so ito po ang turbine, so uh, ang nagpapaikot ng turbine dito ay steam. So steam is the um thing that um turns the uh, mechan uh, the um turbine okay then the turbine is connected to a generator so the generator yan naman po ang uh, the uh, mechanical energy of the generator will be converted into electricity so what does it mean when we say mechanical energy so mechanical energy uh, balik tayo doon. So, mechanical energy is the combination of the objects, um, kinetic and potential energy. So, natutunan nyo naman na in your previous years that kinetic energy is the energy of motion and potential energy is the energy at rest. So, pag pinagsama mo si potential and kinetic energy and they change from one form to another, it becomes mechanical energy. So, yung pag napaandar ng steam, itong turbine, so, mapapaandar ni turbine ang generator. Then, the generator now will produce electricity. So, yun ngayon yung magsusupply ng kuryente sa mga bahay. Okay? Then, in return, para ma uh, maulit yung cycle, so, there are cooling towers. So, this cooling tower cools the steam and condenses it back to water. Then, lastly, the cold water is pumped back into the earth to begin the process again. So, kung makikita nyo dito sa ating um, figure, so this is how a geothermal energy works or a geothermal power plant works. Actually, um, halos similar lang naman to sa lahat ng klase ng um, energy source. So, for example, hydrothermal power plant. So, ang ginagamit naman sa hydropower plant ay water. Yung water ang mag, uh, papagalaw sa turbine. So again, si turbine mapapagalaw niya si generator. Then the mechanical energy of the generator will uh, uh, produce electricity. So uh, same process lang. Magkakaiba lang sila ng um, material na magpapatakbo doon sa turbine. So in a geothermal power plant, remember that the steam spins the turbine. Okay? So these are the simple steps on how a geothermal power plant work and this is a uh, uh, geothermal power plants are facilities that converts this uh, natural heat into electricity okay so for our um additional performance task for this week ito po ang ating google form link Okay, so dun sa mga hindi pa po nakapagsagot ng ating google form para sa week 2 ayun po ay open ulit. Alam nyo namang uh, gusto namin ma-access nyo yung lahat ng ating mga activities eh. Kaya ayun po ay in-open ulit para kayo po ay makapagsagot. Uh, Pakicomment nga po sa ating um, chat box ang inyong mga tanong regarding our lesson today. So anyway, hi po kay Ma'am Ana, Nanonood din siya from Imus. Also to Ma'am uh, Rax, ang aming grade 10 ODL teacher. Same with Ma'am Lori. Uh, fresh from ano, no, town and country. Parang si Ma'am Sally, galing sa Area C, punta kay Ma'am Lori sa town and country, napadpad sa Imus kay Ma'am Ana. So, all science teachers no, are also watching. So, si Hervey Lee, Her Herley V. So, sino nga ba ang science teacher ni Herley V? So, Marveline, oh, they are also watching. Anyway, may tanong po ba regarding our lesson? So, para hindi kayo mahirapan magsagot ng ating um, uh, Google form na ito, uh, mas maganda kung mapanood nyo yung discussion natin kanina para hindi kayo mahirapan and para mataas yung score na makuha nyo. Pwede nyo ulit-ulitin nyo. No? You can watch the replay. Okay? So, wala pang mga tanong. No? Puro feeling love pa lang. <laughs> feeling inspired. Okay? So, proceed tayo. So, LMS time sa aking mga ODL students. <laughs> Um, for uh, week 3 and 4, ito po ang inyong written works. So, learning task number 7, what's the next step? Andali lang yan. Kaya-kaya nyong ma-perfect yan. Na-discuss yan dun sa video. And may discussion din dun sa LMS. So, perf uh, for performance task, 
Learning Task 9, Summative Assessment. So, combination na to ng lahat ng discussion mula week 1 hanggang ngayong week kasi ito ay for module 1. So, lahat ng natutunan nyo mula nung week 1 hanggang ngayong week, yan po ang mga tanong na laman ng ating Learning Task number 9, Summative Assessment. Wala pa rin nagko-comment ng tanong. <laughs> ang dali lang ng lesson, di ba? So, para naman sa aming mga MDL students, no? meron tayong tatlong learning task for this week. So, learning task one, i-fill up nyo lang po itong mga blanks dito. How the heat of the earth is stopped as a source of electricity in power plants. So, clue number one, heat from the inside of the earth. So, pag nakuha na yung heat from inside the earth, ano nang sunod na step na mangyayari? Okay, hanggang sa ma-produce ang electricity. Then, learning task 2, um, you just have to list down three advantages and disadvantages of using geothermal energy. Okay, learning task 3, so five questions, multiple choice. So, batay doon sa napanood nyo, sa napakinggan nyo sa discussion natin, yung natutunan nyo, palagay nyo ano kaya ang mga tamang sagot sa bawat tanong na yan. May pagpipilian naman dyan eh. Alam nyo namang ayaw namin kayong nahihirapan. So, yung sa dulong picture, yan po ang magiging format ng inyong answer sheet. So, para hindi po mahirap sa amin ang pag-check. So, remember, pakilagyan ng subject sa taas and ng inyong pangalan, grade and section. Okay? So, wala pa rin tanong, no? <laughs> Nag-gets nila ang lesson natin today. Okay? So, sa mga uh, may access po sa internet, kung meron na po kayong output sa bawat week natin, so week 1, week 2, week 3 to 4, so ito po ang pattern ng inyong mga answer sheet. Um, I suggest... Um, ito po ay uh, yung screenshot po nitong mga sagot ninyo ay ipasa nyo po sa Google Drive na gagawin ng inyong advisor. So for example, sa section Agoho, nakagawa na si Sir Romil. Um, doon meron kayong folder, meron kayong um, nandun, sa Google Drive, nandun yung folder ng lahat ng subject from Filipino hanggang sa ESP and then nandun din po ang Uh, for, pagbukas nyo noon, may folder din doon ng um, week. Uh, for example, week 1 to week 2. So, doon nyo ngayon i-upload yung screenshot ng inyong sagot sa naka-assign na folder per week. May folder din doon ng inyong pangalan. So, batay doon sa nakita kong Google Drive kay Sir Romil. Okay? So, kung cellphone naman, ang gamit ninyo, ma-upload nyo pa rin yan sa Google Drive, tuturuan na lang kayo ng inyong advisor. Okay? Wala pa rin silang tanong. <laughs> so, so, dahil kayo ay wala pa rin tanong, again, um, uh, for this week, uh, tapos na po tayo sa module 1. We will proceed with another module next week. So, uh, anyway, um, kanina pong 2 o'clock, Uh, 2.20 rather, no? napakinggan nyo ang video lesson natin kanina sa 89.5 North Star FM. Teka po ha, tingnan ko lang kung merong tanong. I-refresh ko lang yung aking YouTube kasi um, parang hindi na siya gumalaw. <laughs> so wait po. Hindi ko makita yung tanong. Wait po ah. Yun. Uh, sabi ni Amerson, Ma'am, yung learner's packet po, gagawin din po ng ODL students. Um, Amerson, yung learner's packet ay intended for our MBL students. So, yung mga ODL students po, ang sasagutan nyo lang po ay yung task na nasa LMS. So, magkaiba po kayo ng platform pero same lesson. Okay? So, para hindi magulo. Again, yung uh, mga ODL students, ito po ang learning task na inyong sasagutan sa, mood, uh, sa LMS. At yung mga um, MDL students namin, ito naman po ang inyong sasagutan sa learner's packet. Okay? So, isusulat nyo lang po ang inyong sagot sa intermediate pad. Then, pipituran. Then, isisend sa Um, Google Drive. Kung wala namang access, 
um, magmamodify tayo. So, gagawa tayo ng paraan kung paano namin makukuha ang inyong mga answer sheets. So, wait lang na, wait lang kayo ng announcement. No? Kalma lang kayo. Makukuha din namin yung inyong mga answer sheets. So, meron pa pong tanong? Masagot ko ba ang tanong ni Amerson? <laughs> okay. So, so far... Wala naman pa ako ulit nakikita ang tanong. Naghang lang pala yung YouTube ko, no? Kaya hindi ko nabasa agad ang tanong ni Amerson. Okay, thank you for that, Amerson. Now, how about the others? So, again, yung le video lesson natin kanina ay napakinggan sa um, aming radio station, 89.5 North Star FM, Tatak K. Kaya um, kung kayo ay may radio sa bahay, Um, before the live stream, mapapakinggan nyo ang, um, ang ating video lesson every Wednesday at 2.20 p.m. Para, uh, para may advance na learning na agad kayo no, bago tayo mag-live stream. Yes, nag, uh, nasagot ko daw ang tanong ni Amerson. Okay po. So, wala na pong tanong, students. Ang dali lang ng lesson natin this week, no? Okay. So, anyway, dahil wala na kayong tanong, We will proceed with um, our next uh, module, uh, our module number two next week, no? So, again, um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe our channel, Dasma North Science. So, you won't miss any video lesson at para updated din kayo sa aming mga, um, sa ating mga uh, discussion. So, So this is Mom Janice Reyes. See you again next week. Bye.